I'm excited to be welcome on with the top dual sport athletes in 2022 and Anthony Black. What's going on there, bro? What's up? What's up? Not much, man. Well, I mean, the past few weeks have been blowing up. AU games started getting going for you guys. What's it been like the past few weeks for you? Uh, I just, it's been, it's been, it just felt good uh, being able to get back on the court and, uh, you know, yeah, just getting back to everything. And you're obviously playing 3D Empire right now. You've been pulling in a ton of offers recently, especially for basketball. What's it been like? Talk about some of your relationships you've been forming recently with basketball coaches. Uh, it's been it's been cool starting to like because they can start texting us just recently. Mm-hmm. So starting to talk to all the coaches and uh, get to know all the coaches is pretty cool. And like uh, building a relationship over the years is probably it's gonna make a big uh, it's gonna be a big deal in where you commit. So building those relationships is uh, important. We're going to talk a little about football in a minute as well, but quickly, I mean, you are a dual sport athlete. You're elite in both sports, have offers from many high major programs in both sports. Is it a priority for you to possibly receive both football and basketball to possibly play two sports at the college level? I mean, if if a good enough school allows me to do that, that would be, that would be awesome for me. Mm-hmm. But, like, I don't know. Yeah, if I could play both, I mean, I obviously would, but – if I have to make a decision, I'll just have to make a decision eventually. No doubt. And because you're in 2022, you've also have been allowed now to start talking to coaches. You've been able to call mm-hmm. them as well, them calling you. What's what's it been like? What was that first day kind of getting used to talking to coaches? What's it been like? Uh, the first day, it was pretty – I guess it was cool, but it was pretty hectic because uh, mm-hmm. you'd be on the phone with one coach, getting a call from another one, a text from another one. And this is like, it was a lot for like those first like three or four days. But then like, it was pretty cool though to see uh, kind of who was interested. And you got to kind of see firsthand like who was looking at you. And obviously I had one of your close friends, Ryan, on a couple weeks ago. And he talked about the same process. You guys are close friends, both are in 2022. I mean, what's it been like mm-hmm. seeing both of you guys now succeed and start being able to know that you guys can go to the next level together now? Um, It just feels good seeing my teammates and myself do good because, uh, they're like my family, so I want them to do. I want them to do just as good or even better as I as I do. And I end up. Without a doubt. Tell us some of the offers you have pulled in for basketball wise. Some of them are close to stay. I mean, TCU, Texas Tech, Texas. Mm-hmm. Is staying close to home any kind of importance to you? Um, it doesn't make. It's not like a big. Uh, it's like not like a big turn on or turn off. But mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't think. Uh, how close it is really matters like that. Absolutely. And let's talk about the Texas Tech program, a program that's a national champion from two years ago. They've obviously pulled in a lot of guys that make them go to the next level, underrated players as well. What's your mm-hmm. coach like with Coach Beard? And just what do you think about that program? Um, I like them a lot. And uh, I think they do a good job of taking you and preparing you for the next level and developing you, putting you in a situation to where you can get to the next level. And if basketball is the sport you end up choosing down the road, what are some of the biggest things you want to see from a basketball program? Um, I just I just want to get there and uh, them develop me and, like, help me become a better player. And uh, someone who has a winning coach and obviously wants to win a lot of games and compete at a high level. Another one of those schools is Texas as well. Shocker Smart, a legendary coach again, puts a lot of guys in the NBA as well. And a lot of guys from hometown also go there. What kind of attraction is Texas and Coach Shocker Smart to you? Um, I like them a lot. Coach Barry from Texas was pretty much the first coach I started talking to. Like, mm-hmm. he wasn't the first first coach to text me, but he was the first one to, like, consistently call me and text me and, like, start to actually build a relationship. And then I talked with Coach Smart, I think, like, a week after you were allowed to start, like, talking to coaches early. Mm-hmm. And he just seemed cool and – I liked him a lot, and his pitch was nice. And then uh, it was like another week went by, and then I was playing pretty good, so then they called me and gave me the offer. That's awesome. And TC is another one, another Big 12 school, also Austin, Texas as well. What do you like about mm-hmm. them? Um, just winning spirit, and, you know, you can go there and – I wouldn't say – you can go there and pretty much, like, uh, you can be like – the lead player and you can get there and like stuff depending on how good you are stuff can be ran through you and like you can have a chance like to go there and be like the face of the team 
and two, three, four months ago, basketball probably wasn't always the biggest thing for you. We saw all the offers you bring in for football. We knew how established you were in them. We knew you were a good basketball player, but I said the past couple weekends, you've been blowing up, pulling all these offers. I mean, when did it kind of click for you that you realized you could play this level? You could also be an elite basketball prospect. Um, I've kind of, I've kind of always known it inside my head, but it came to the point where I was tired of like everybody else thinking I was just like a football player who plays basketball. So I had to make like in my head, I had to like push myself and like I had to, I had to play how I knew I could play, so I could show everybody else how I knew I could play. In today's world, a lot of people say it's not as easy as it was past generations to play two sports. A lot of people say focusing on one sport trying to get grind all out in one sport. How are you able to balance that and be able to grind on two different sports? Uh, you just have to be willing to put in the work, and uh, you just have to work at both. Just love both and keep doing them as long as you can, really. And how would you say, going through your quarantine period, the first those few months right there, how were you able to work in? What, what was your workout schedule like? Um, so before we got shut down again, I would have uh, strength and conditioning from – 6.45 to 8 something. Then I would have football skills after that. From I guess it was it was 6.45 to 8.45. Then football skills from 9 to 10. And then I had basketball from 11 to like 1. And then after that, it was Tuesday and Thursdays I had uh, AU practice those nights. But then that was like a consistent schedule. Absolutely. So now let's head into your football recruitment time. You put together another great season once again, but you have offers from Cincinnati, Georgia Tech, Iowa State, Baylor, Houston, Arkansas, Hawaii. And the list goes on. What what do you what's your bond like with some of those programs? Um, I can't. We can't really talk like as fluidly as we can on basketball yet because I think that starts in September. But uh, I like I like pretty much all the coaches I've caught and talked to, and they're all cool. Uh, they all think highly of me, and they really want me to go and play for them. So that's cool, and uh, especially the coach, Coach Justin Staff from Arkansas, he pretty much started everything off, and he, like, once I got an offer from him, and he told me, like, a lot of other schools are going to roll in, so he pretty much started everything. And take us to those first days, the first day you got your first Division One basketball offer and the first day you got your very first Division One football offer. What were those days like, and how did you learn about the offer? Um, so for basketball, we were playing in a Louisville game, Whereas Keontae George and uh, I played pretty good that game. And there was, there was a lot of coaches there to see because they had a good senior guard named uh, KJ. Mm -hmm. So it was KJ Pruitt, Keontae, and then me and Ryan were all playing versus each other. So a lot of coaches were there. And I had a pretty solid game. And then uh, the next day, my dad told me that to call Coach McCasin from UNT. And then we talked for like an hour, and then he told me how to offer. And then for football, um, I don't remember. It was a Sunday, and uh, I was just chilling with my dad. And one of the coaches from the school told me like to call Coach Jones from Kansas, the receivers coach. Mm -hmm. And I like called him and talked to him. He told me I had an offer, and it was just like it was just like a lot of emotions going through my head. Let's talk about the KU offer. I mean, that's a program that we know hasn't been the best program in the past few years. They have a new mm -hmm. coaching staff out there. We obviously know Coach Les Moss is a great coach, and he's starting to build something special. He wants to. What do you like about the idea of having a legendary coach like Coach Miles that is trying to rebuild a program, and how appealing would it be to possibly be a part of that rebuild? Um, that's that's huge because obviously Coach Les Miles has been through a lot, and he knows what it takes to win and uh, get to the next level. So I feel like uh, going to play for him will you'll always have like a you'll always have a good chance to compete and win. And I think he's going to do a good job of turning the program around into the way he wants it to be. And have you had any discussions? I mean, you said obviously you couldn't talk to football as much, but basketball coaches, have you mentioned it as something that you have kind of made a priority just put out there that you would like to possibly play both sports? Um, I talked a little bit with Coach Drew from Baylor about it. Mm -hmm. And well, most, most, most of them usually ask, like, if I want to play both. I just say – uh, if a good enough school like gives me the opportunity to play both, that would be like huge. So I'll probably, I'll probably think about that a lot. And we have talked about the schools that have offered you at this point for basketball, but I can imagine there's a ton more that's been just in contact with you, have interest in you. Mm -hmm. Who would you say are some of those schools from the most interest at this point? 
Um, probably, I've talked to most probably Baylor, uh, Tennessee, um, more people I talk to. I'm talking to Western Kentucky a little bit. Uh, there's like, there's a long list of people I've talked to, but those are the ones I talk to like the most, like, like day to day more than the other ones. Would you probably expect those schools to probably offer sometime soon? Uh, maybe Baylor, because today they asked for two of the games I think I did the best in. So maybe maybe after they get that film and watch, maybe I'll get them. And then maybe that'll bring some other ones in too. I don't know. Absolutely. And so where do you know? I mean, you, ha- you will have the opportunity to play at a high major school, Power 5 conference. But is for you when you go through this recruiting process, is playing at a Power 5 or – a mid-major, low-major, something that is a priority to you? Um, I really – I want to play Power 5, but at the end of the day, if, if I'm not a Power 5 player, I don't want to force myself to play. But if it's if it's a good fit for me, of course, like, I'd love to be a Power 5 player and play high major, play play versus the, the top dudes in college. We kind of already talked about you and Ryan's bond, but as I said, Ryan's also a high-level Division One player as well. Have you guys had discussions about possibly wanting to team up and play with each other in college if the opportunity and offers line up? Um, yeah, we've talked about it a little bit, and uh, it's it would be cool because we've been playing together for high school and a little bit before with AU. So if we got the chance, that would be that would be huge. And Ryan gave his side of the story, but talk about how you and Ryan first met. What's your side of that story? Um. I think the first time we like really met and became like we like really bonded was probably seventh grade basketball. Mm-hmm. It was like the second half of the school year, and we had like different friend groups, so like we weren't really we weren't really like we didn't really know each other that much. But then once the basketball season started rolling, like we became friends. Like obviously we played against each other for like the years and years before, but we knew of each other. We didn't we weren't really like tight with each other. And then once basketball started, we we became like we just became building a bond, and then like eventually we got him to play for our team and like our summer team. Mm-hmm. And that's obviously where you guys have been blowing up with 3D Empire and Ryan talked about it. You guys probably could have the opportunity to go to a sponsored team, a big Adidas, Nike, or Under Armour team, but you guys want to choose to stay with 3D. And you guys believe that you guys can form a team to be sponsored. I mean, how do you think that? What's it like kind of having that and trying to get the student sponsorship deal? Uh, it feels good, but, like, I feel like if you're talented enough, or, like, if you're talented in general, uh, it's possible, like, it's very well possible to go, like, to college and get scholarships playing on a non-sponsored team, Mm -hmm. but, uh, getting that sponsorship and playing against the top dudes and, like, boosting your stock, that would be, that would be cool, too. Like, I would like to do that. We see what you guys have been able to accomplish the past few weekends. Where do you guys think you guys kind of rank up? I mean, you guys have only played Texas teams right now, but... We just think you guys kind of rank up amongst the other Texas teams. Uh, I think we have the best team in Texas until proven otherwise, really. Mm-hmm. No doubt. And, yeah. Let's kind of head into your high school season. A 29-6 record, another big-time year for you guys. Take us through the ups and downs of the past season. Um, we start off the season pretty good. In our first, like, school – like, our first tournament, we lost a game we could have won versus Colleen Ellison, they're the number six team in Texas at the time. Mm-hmm. And then we lost to the Louisville and District. But other than that, and we played good pretty much the whole regular season. And then the playoffs rolled around. We kind of had an easy first round game. And then we played Walks actually the second game and we didn't we didn't shoot well and they shot really well and just a lot of stuff didn't go our way. So uh, I think that's a game we could have won, but uh, we just lost that game and our season was over. And you look at your numbers this past year, a little over 10 points a game, five rebounds, almost four assists a game. Pretty solid numbers, but what's the next jump for you? What do you think you're personally capable of averaging next season? I think if I play the way I play in AU, I think I can easily average over 15 and like six or seven assists too, six or seven rebounds too, because rebounding – Rebound is really about, like, if you want to rebound. So, like, if I really – I think if I really, like, put my mind to it and my athleticism, I can get a lot of rebounds. And then the assists just come naturally. And two of the other top leading scorers for you guys are now seniors that graduated. It's going to be pretty much be you and Ryan's team next season, along with other guys, of course. 
what do you guys look to, what, what do you guys, how excited are you guys to be able to go out there and lead the team next year? Uh, really excited because now I think we're pretty much going to be like the top dogs on the team and it's going to be up to us whether we win or not. And we're just going to have to go out there and hoop, really. And there's a lot of talent in Texas. It's one of the, not the best state in all of America. When you look at all of the mm-hmm. great duos, great teams in Texas, I mean, where do you guys also think you guys ranked up in terms of high school basketball? I really think we're just right up there with as the top duo, really, because what we're capable of doing, we haven't even we haven't even scratched the surface of what we're capable of doing. I think next year we're gonna like we're gonna unlock fully and like we're just gonna come out as like the best duo in Texas. Yeah. And the team you guys lost from the playoffs also have a lot of the top twenty twenty two talents. When you look at those guys like Jordan and Trey and TJ and along with other guys, who would you guys say was some of the hardest matchups or maybe even your favorite matchup of the year? Um, it might have been I wonder what, I think it was probably Dickinson. They're from around the I think the Houston area. Mm-hmm. They have they have a dude committed to Houston. He's pretty he's really good, and they have another dude who I'm not sure where he's committed. But those two were like those two are pretty dominant. And then their other players, their other their guard play was it was just crazy. And then their center was solid too. So. That was probably the best, like, complete team that we played. That's big time. And also on the other side, you also obviously played football as well. Take us to the past football season. Um, football season, it went good, but uh, I wasn't, like, 100% for real about playing football. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, I feel like if I would have, like, worked out and trained to be a football player, or, like, a good football player last summer before the season, I would have had, like, a way better season. Like, now I'm starting to do all that stuff. So, but uh, for having none of that, I think it was a pretty good season. I could have done – there were some plays I could have made that I didn't, but overall it was pretty good. And everything's obviously still up in the air because of COVID. What is What are you guys kind of hearing? What's it going to look like for football season this upcoming year? Um, The UIL, who, like, runs Texas sports, they basically came out and said, right now the plan is to keep uh, everything on schedule and – running just how it was supposed to be. But I'm not sure if that's going to happen. And so if there is a season, <laughs> if all goes down on time and all, what do you think you're capable of doing next year? What do you, What's some of the biggest stats or achievements you want to be able to achieve next year? Uh, I want to get over 1,000 yards and, like, around 15 touchdowns next year because I think being only a sophomore last year and doing what I did, I think junior me can do a lot better. And, like, especially now that uh, I'm not just raw talent. I actually, like, I, like, perfecting my craft a little bit. So now I think next year should be a lot better. And what kind of level of football player are you? I mean, we already see, like I said, tons of power five, tons of top teams in the country offering you. Where do you think, what kind of player do you think you can turn into being by the time you graduate? By the time I graduate, I think I should be able, I should be good enough to play like really wherever. And like, I think if I just keep working hard and stay with the right people and doing the right thing, I think I should be, I think I should be a power five player for sure and be, like, solid. No doubt. So, let's go all the way back. What was your first sport? Was football or basketball the first sport you played? Um, the first sport I, like, played for for real. I played, like, rec basketball. Mm-hmm. I was, like, I was like a decent rec player until, like, fifth grade. But football, I played, like, I think it was, like, fourth or third grade. I started playing football. And, like, uh, I, I really took, like, a long break from football and just started playing basketball. But then once school sports started again, seventh grade, that was when, like, I kind of started playing both. Gotcha. And would you say is any of them you kind of love more than the other one, or do you, are they pretty much even right now? Uh, they're pretty even right now. That's awesome. And you look down the line, I mean, there we have seen multiple dual sport athletes play. A lot of guys have played, guys like Kyle Murray that play football and, bas- and baseball, obviously. When you look mm-hmm. at those kind of guys that have been able to do it, who are some of your favorite guys that have been dual sport athletes that you kind of, in a way, model your game after or just kind of look to them as role models to a degree? Um, well, my dad going to Baylor, I was pretty much around, like, I was around Baylor a lot of my life. And uh, and one of the dudes from Baylor who played was Rico Gavis. He mm-hmm. played, I think he was like four or five for Baylor. Mm-hmm. And then when he was done, he ended up, playing tight end for the Cowboys for a little bit. So, like, that was pretty much the most, like, inspirational person for me. And they barely had, like, a lot of people do it. Mm-hmm. Like, that was just one of the ones I remember more, uh, frankly. 
And so when you see a program like Baylor, there's obviously a lot more to do it. That you see guys that not only have dual sport athletes, but get them to the professional level in one of the sports. How much more mm-hmm. does that make the school eventually for you? Um, I mean, a lot because you see that they know what to do with, with guys who have the same goals that you have. And uh, you see people who did the same thing you're trying to do who went there and had success doing it. So. And when you look at possible transferring, I know there's, I can imagine a ton of big prep schools, powerhouse kind of schools have looked into you. Is that something you ever gonna consider? Uh, I kind of like, I think I kind of like what I have going on in the cup of me and Ryan right now, but mm-hmm. obviously if something, if something changed and it was a good opportunity, I would, I would be, I would probably, I would be, I would consider it. But like right now, I think I'm pretty good where I'm at. I know for some dual sport guys, the biggest thing is, does that prep national team have dual sport? Can you still play both? Would that, would that be something you'd have to make sure they have for you to possibly even consider the transfer? Yeah. If, if I was going to, if, if I was, I was already asked to transfer somewhere for basketball, mm-hmm. but like if they don't have a football team, like uh, it's, it's like an instant no pretty much until, until my love for football runs out. Gotcha. Absolutely, man. My last thing before I let you go is, I can imagine you ultimately want to build a legacy for yourself, both on and off the court. By the time you walk away from both sports, what do you want that legacy to be? Um, I want to be someone who played both at a high level and uh, someone who who worked hard and played hard. You can just remember like that. It's the hardest working. Absolutely, man. Well, I'm definitely excited to see what God's got next for you, man. Keep doing your thing, man. Yes, sir. Got you. All right, man. Talk to you later, bro. God bless. Yes, sir. You too.